For parts A and B, we're just using the standard X and Y axis, so for those parts, we're going to eliminate the axes that are labeled X prime and Y prime. And now we can just draw the standard X and Y component. So let's start at the origin. Let's project an X component along the positive X axis. We'll call that A sub X. Let's go up the positive Y axis and call that A sub Y. Notice A sub X is adjacent to the angle and A sub Y is opposite of the angle. We have formed a right triangle so we can start to use some right triangle trigonometry. So we can see from our triangle that the cosine of our angle theta would equal the adjacent, which is A sub X, over the hypotenuse, which is A. We can plug in the given data. The angle was 56 degrees and the magnitude of vector A in the denominator here was 17 meters. We solve for AX by multiplying both sides of the equation by 17 meters to cancel it out on the right hand side and we can see that A sub X is approximately 9.51 meters. So this is the correct answer for part A. We'll come back up here and look at part B which wants the Y component. So this time we'll use the sine function. We know the sine of that angle theta is equal to the side that is opposite, which is A sub Y, over the hypotenuse, which is A. We fill in the same data as before. We multiply both sides of the equation by 17 meters. So let's see what the 17 times sine of 56 turns out to be, and that's about 14.1 meters. So this is the correct answer for part B, the Y component of vector A. Now let's look at parts C and D. So here is the original diagram. We know theta is 56 degrees, and now we introduce theta prime. That was given as 18 degrees. Now why don't we go ahead and highlight the new set of axes here. We have X prime, which is then perpendicular to this new Y prime axis right here. And what we want is the angle measured from that new x-axis. So if you look carefully, we want the angle right there. So you gotta ask yourself, well, how would I figure out that angle? And it's some basic subtraction, because you know, starting from the original x-axis, that this angle is the 56 degrees, and then this theta prime from that x-axis, the original x-axis was 18 degrees. So if you subtract, you're gonna end up getting that new theta. So we're just gonna call this theta double prime, and we're going to take 56 degrees and we're going to subtract 18 degrees and this is going to give us 38 degrees. So again, that's this angle right here. We'll kind of squeeze it in. That's theta double prime. And now that we have that established, we can actually erase the original X and Y axis for some clarity here. So there is the axis and we're going to just draw in the components again. So we'll start at the origin, move along this new X axis. They called it X prime. So we get out there to our x component. We're now calling that a sub x prime. And then we go up the new y axis or y prime axis and we have the y component. That's a sub y prime. So it's just back now to the same old trigonometry. We have the cosine of theta double prime equals the side that is adjacent, which is a x prime over the hypotenuse. Notice the hypotenuse hasn't changed. That still is a. So now all you need to do is plug in the new angle of 38 degrees put in the original magnitude of 17 meters, multiply both sides by 17, so you'll have 17 cosine of 38, which turns out to be about 13.4 meters. That's gonna equal AX prime. That's the correct answer to part C. Now we'll just do this with the sine function. So the sine of 38 degrees equals the side that is opposite, which is A sub Y prime over A, which was 17 meters. Multiply both sides by 17 meters, and 17 times the sine of 38 is about 10.5 meters. And this is the correct answer to part D of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.